A chat with Darren is brought to you by Chaps Metal Work, located at 372 Willardine Parkway, Old Harbor Road in Spanish Town. Wear Faith Merch. Visit them at www.wearfaithmerch.com and everything Anthony Media. Purpose. He is Darren. He's on a journey. Walk with him to uncover the untold stories one by one. It's a chat with Darren. Hi, welcome to season two of A Chat with Darren. So good to be back. I'm super excited. I took a break because of the passing of my mom. And now I'm back. I'm feeling much better than before. I want to say thanks to all the persons who have been praying for me. And, um, you know, I'm grateful. And I'm back. So I'm super excited about today's chat. Yeah, I'm super, super duper excited. I have the privilege of chatting with today's guest, who is a Caribbean Hall of Fame awardee, an ordained minister with a PhD in pastoral counseling, an anointed woman of God, an international recording gospel artist, a woman of God with a big heart, a beautiful soul, and a bright smile. It's my pleasure to welcome, right here on A Chat with Darren, Dr. Carlene davis Cohen. Good morning and welcome. Oh, it's a joy and a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So good yes. to have you. I feel like I've made it in life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Oh my you. goodness, I have <laughs> Carlene Davis in front of me. It's, it's, trust me, it's just, it's surreal. Um, but so good to have you here. And the first question I'd like to ask you, uh, does this island still need Jesus? It's as relevant as ever before, never mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. What can I say? There's never a time when we don't need Jesus. Right. So it's a declaration that we need to continually chant mm -hmm. over this nation. Amazing. That's, yes. That song was a big song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. And it still is. People yeah. are still calling yeah. for it. Yeah. We're still ministering it. We just recently did it for mm -hmm. Fun in the Sun. And yes. the, the response was enormous. People were just making that declaration because that's what it is. It's declaring that this island need Jesus. Wow. Yes. Um, you, you spoke about Fun in the Sun. Um, quickly tell us, um, how was that? It was an amazing time. It was our Fun in the Sun community engagement um, leg of, of this event. And at the Pembroke Hall High School grounds mm -hmm. in the South St. Andrew Division with JCF was on board. And we had a Ministry of Health right. with dental services and, of course, the Kiddies Village and um, so many Jamaica moves. And, of course, we had Pembroke Hall High School band. Yes, um, yes. They were playing, backing up the community ambassadors from the different churches and schools. And of course, we closed with a great time of high praise and worship with um, Pastor Donnie McClurkin bringing the word and ministers such as Kevin Downswell, Rhoda Isabella, Gadi Gadi, um, Isaiah Raymond from the UK, um, Perpetual Sounds of Praise with Nadine Blair and myself. And it was an awesome time we 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 know that lives have been changed because of it because yeah. the bible says where the presence of the lord is there is liberty. liberty and we came out in our numbers giving god all the praise wow yes i love it and yes. i was a part of that as well yes <laughs> yes you were <laughs> one of the mcs for the community ambassadors yes, and yes. that was an awesome time yes. with um uh, another guest mc from yes. the community and, French. Mm -hmm. and that was the purpose to bring the the people from the community to be engaged in this event we brought an event as as this into their community yes. and we're thankful that they allowed us we're giving thanks for Pembroke Hall High School um, Reverend Claude Ellis for allowing the principal for allowing us to come on board in their community it was yes. a wonderful time yes and um, awesome. I must say thanks to you and your husband Tommy Coy for <laughs> allowing me to be a part yeah you're of welcome Fun in the sun anything we can do to to invest mm -hmm. 
in each other. Yes. Awesome. Yes. So, to, to name um, four adjectives that best describes um, Carling Davis. Ah, my goodness. When you, you know, it, that's a, I don't like to beat my own chest, <laughs> honestly, but I believe I'm someone that's very caring, mm -hmm. very creative. Yes. Um, I'm a prayer warrior. Yes. I, I run to pray yes. for everything. My family will tell you that. Mm -hmm. And, and just someone that gives, loves to give back to, to, into those God would place in my life. Yeah. That's yeah. a joy to serve in that way. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Th tell us, um, you know, growing up, um, I think it's in Clarendon. Yes. You grew up. Um, tell us what the early life in Clarendon was like for you. Well, it was fun. All I can say is fun. Mm -hmm. Um, it was rural Colonel's Ridge. That's the community at the foothills of Bullhead Mountain. And I always say that because I, the idea of being from the country. Yes. It, and it gets me so excited because I grew up with nature, mm -hmm. rivers around me, hills and valleys and lots of fruity trees. So I, I enjoyed climbing trees and I still, you used to climb trees. of course, and I still like to climb trees. <laughs> My husband will allow me. <laughs> But yeah, I love. Did I love. Go to the river and carry water and stuff like that. Yes, you carry. Yes, it? because we did, we loved it. We thought it was such. We walked barefoot. We ran barefooted. Mm -hmm. You know, we played in the water. When the rain is falling, you'll see us walk and take our shoes off and be just paddling in the water to get home. It was fun. Wow, you know, uh, if, if 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 you can see some of the the um, deposits that were, um, you know, made by your grandparents or your grandmother at the time, what would you say are some of those core um, values that were involved? Mm. Well, they, they taught us how to give, how to serve our community. I remember my grandfather, he, you know, has his own farm and um, whenever he came home with the, with the produce from the land, it was for the entire community. So as soon as he got home, Mass Joe, Miss Mary, Mass whatever, they'll all come with their come for their supply. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was that spoke volume of of serving one another, mm -hmm. you know, and and of course the instilling the discipline of our walk in Christ. Wow. Um, my parents started it out, but of course they had migrated to England, so we grew up with our grandparents. And Sunday, if I missed. Sunday service, I mm -hmm. felt like I missed out on so much for that week. Yeah. Going to church was everything for us as a family, mm -hmm. as a unit, and, and the entire community. Wow. That was our lifestyle. So that was our social life. Mm -hmm. Church. Church. Yes. Yeah. And so you migrated to England. Right. After and then to Canada. That's right. So tell us how, how did that happen for you? Well, I didn't want to go to England. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stay with my grand, <laughs> both grandparents on my dad's side and on my mom's side. But eventually they said, nope, you're coming right. with the rest mm -hmm. of the siblings. You're all coming to join us in England. And that I did. Then I got excited. I went, you know, took my first air, airplane mm -hmm. flight. And mm -hmm. that was interesting. As a child in the country, yes. you'll see the aircrafts flying overhead and you say, wow, one day, one day. And then it happened. And going to england and being the the only black girl in my class was like crazy because oh. everybody was surrounded me mm -hmm. and i'm thought what is so special about me why is it at a recess mm -hmm. everybody wanted to know about my lifestyle where i'm from and mm -hmm. they wanted to know about jamaica because you can imagine people like in europe they've never traveled to the caribbean and they might have ideas what it is mm -hmm. that um it is to be a, a West Indian. So I'll teach teach them about the crops that grew on our farm, the fruits that we'd go and pick and have mangoes and that bananas. Yeah, we didn't. We're not monkeys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we eat bananas, yes. right? And because you know the the whole prejudice yes, thing sir. existed then as it is today, and so. But I felt very privileged to have come from the islands. And to be able to share my experience with people of the first world, you know, and um, no sooner I became, I became a prefect, mm -hmm. and, no, and then I became head girl, wow. and I would, I became the first black girl to become head girl in my school, in my wow. high school. So, and just awesome being part of the music minute, the music um, department. Department. Mm -hmm. My within three weeks of being in that high school, my teacher got me signed up wow. to be part of to lead the choir 
That's that's when music started for you? No, it existed from I was in Kerners Ridge. Yes. You know, from I was knee high, my parents. Mm -hmm. They never they took every opportunity to get me to sing, mm -hmm. to set me on a platform, you know, from, from Sunday school to to my early years in primary school, Mount Carmel Primary School there in Kerners Ridge, yeah. And of course into into my my high school in England, mm -hmm. um, Wilson Secondary High. Yes. Yeah. So uh, when did you realize that music is your calling? That's what you should do. I've always sang, and after uh, my education, finishing um, university, and I'm working nine to five. Music was always in between from those my first few years in England. And then when I migrated to Canada, I continued to do both. And then it was getting a little tiring because I would do nine to five, quit, go on the road full time as an as a, as a singer. Mm -hmm. Then I'll get back in the in, in an office um, environment and it was just getting too much. And eventually I said, no, I have to make a choice. And once I made that decision to to do music full time, I just never looked back. Wow. Yeah. Um, who was the first producer that uh, you know gave you a, a record? <laughs> uh, there was a gentleman in Canada called Joe Richards. He had a record label called G Clef Records. And what he used to do is come to Jamaica, record the tracks, mm -hmm. take it back to Canada, and then I'd voice the songs um, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then there was another uh, producer called um, um, Luddy from the group called, the singing group from Jamaica called the Pioneers, and they were big okay. in Europe. Then he moved to Canada, and then I did my second album with him and Winston Hewitt, and that's how it started. And then, of course, along the way, I met um, Minister Babs Grange, who was then living in Canada mm -hmm. and had her own booking and management company called Grange Walker and Associates, and then I was assigned to her. She started managing and booking me in Canada and then from then I transitioned to Can to Jamaica when she returned to Jamaica. Okay. Yeah. So you were doing um, reggae at the time, right? Who was it wasn't just reggae. It was just souls, yes, a um, middle of the road music, pop mm -hmm. music, um, rock and roll, country and western, whatever the was of the people needed and the venue that you were appearing at the time, you know. Okay. And then on weekends I would do the Caribbean um, um, clubs and and so on. Um, just to stay alive. <laughs> okay. Uh, what I wanted to to find out is some of the persons who you, you know you would call some of your cobs in the music industry, industry at the time. You would mean you say? that I emulated? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, of course, you had in the early years living in, in England, you had the likes of the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, and of course the the Motown heroes, people like. Um, the Temptations, Dana Ross and the Supremes, um, the Jackson Five. I mean, they were huge as young artists who were just just doing it across the world. And of course, um, you had Aretha Franklin, people, great singers like that, that, that really encouraged me. That's about Jamaican artists. The Jamaican artists, you had the likes of the Jamaicans, but I didn't know Tommy Cowan at the time. <laughs> 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 yes, you had, of course, the, the Whalers before it became Bob Marley and the Whalers mm -hmm. and um, Alton Ellis because their music were, was big in England while I was growing up. Jimmy Cliff, oh my goodness, he was really one of my earlier um, Caribbean artists, Jamaican artists that I really listened to a lot, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Okay. Talk to us about the transition now uh, to. Uh, gospel music how did it happen what what, what was the um the intervention sh should i say what was the conviction mm. that caused you to to do um or start uh, to do gospel music amazingly all my life i've always done gospel music mm -hmm. but not with the conviction that i have today so in in the early in the mid 80s Tommy and I went in the studio and did an album called Jesus is Only a Prayer Way because we were doing a, a Christmas album called Christmas Reggae Rock and then something led us to do this Christmas um, gospel album and I thought, and that took off, took off, took off. Mm -hmm. By this time, I was not walking the walk. Mm -hmm. I was one foot in, one foot out. Okay. 
And then in the 90s, in 1996, when I was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer, mm. that was a turning point that I said, God, I am through with running from you. That was really what I heard me saying to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. I run to you because there was nowhere else to go. Yeah. I, I knew there was nowhere else to go. And I said, God, I, I'm ready. Use me as your vessel. And I know we want to touch, um, if you don't mind, in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the, the condition that you had and, mm -hmm. and, and your experience behind mm -hmm. that. But you made mention of your, your husband, mm -hmm. um, Tommy. How did that happen with, with you two? Well, actually, it was my husband that discovered it. You know, husband and wives, and we're on tour. And he said, what's that? You know, I'm, I'm feeling something. What's that? And we said, okay, as soon as we get back to Jamaica, let's go see the doctor. We went and the doctor set up uh, an appointment for us to do a mammogram. No, they did. And they did a test. I didn't do a mammogram, actually. Mm -hmm. I did a, uh, they did a test. And the test showed that it was malignant. Mm -hmm. So we had to go and get all the surgery done and chemotherapy and all of that. It was, it was quite a, a scary experience. Mm -hmm. and, but God kept us. Because during the time, even prior to getting surgery and all of that, I had already released everything into God's hand. And I said, God, this is too much for me. I cast my cares upon you. And I literally saw the transformation immediately when I was able to, to have the peace. God gave me the peace to go through the, the process mm -hmm. of, of, of this diagnosis. Wow. And here we are today, you know, it's been over 20 odd years to God wow. be the glory. Wow, Great amazing. things he has done and continues to do in our lives. And um, funny enough, we're recording now in um, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What would you say to, um, you know, persons out there who are watching right now? Well, just be proactive, check yourself and and get all the support you can get with your doctors. If, if, if the diagnosis is, is malignant, and don't hesitate don't wait just go get the help you need and make sure that your soul is at rest in the lord because we just don't know what the end result will be and that was my situation i didn't know the end was what the end result was and say god if i should not make it at least i know my heart is safe my soul is safe with jesus yeah you know that one and that was it. Wow. So I would just encourage everyone to make sure that you put your, get your heart in order with God. Prioritize on that. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Um, tell us, who are your um, greatest cheerleaders or supporters? Well, my greatest cheerleaders um, is my, my husband, first, of, first and foremost, my children. And there are so many people in the industry, even the musicians that I work with, you know, people like currently like a Dave Green and... Um, all the musicians that I've had to interact with, Desi Jones, um, Chris McDonald, um, Lloyd Parks, um, Othney Lewis, there's so many. My singers, um, Michelle Patterson, um, Latoya Newell, and all the other singers and musicians that I've had to work with over the years, Robbie Lynn, um, Sly and Robbie, you know, Dean Fraser. I mean, there's so many musicians that have impacted. As a matter of fact, even while we're here, I've left my musicians, Corey Clark and my engineer, Marvin Jackson in the studio, working, wow. working while I'm here doing this interview. So God is so faithful. And of course, the managers over the years, um, Babsy Grange and um, so many others, you know, um, Marcia Griffiths I just recently was with her and we're just giving thanks how God has kept us through the years, you know. Amazing. Amazing. I love that. And, yeah. and speak about your husband. Um, how did you guys meet? And, um... It was through music. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm visiting Jamaica, living in Canada, visiting Jamaica. And every time uh, whoever was in charge of my music at the time would bring me here, he'd be the man because he ran a booking management agency. And so he'd one of the person, the point person that'd say, here's a young artist. What do you think with, you know, any opportunities? there for her we'd like to call on you and so on and so forth and of course eventually while he was at Tough Gong working as marketing manager with Bob Marley at 56 Hope Road I would have had to go visit every now and again or I'm in the studio so I would constantly see him 
And we, we became friends, meaning that he's someone that I could rock back on if I needed to just get some advice because I'm now fresh from Canada, living in Jamaica, and I needed to just have someone that I could relate to outside of my management team at the time. And he was a great sounding board. Mm -hmm. And eventually we got to know each other. We started dating. How did he make um, his first move? How did he make? <laughs> well, the story goes, I'm, I'm at what was called the Hilton at the time. And Ernest Smith and I came back from Jamaica and we were doing a series of events around the island with Babsy. And um, he was in the audience. And he, at the break, he went to Ernie backstage and he said, who does she belong to? <laughs> and Ernie said, she belongs to herself. What do you mean? <laughs> so that was the, 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 the open door, okay, you know, to have, you mm. know, started asking me out. And I said, no, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't agree to it that first night, but eventually I realized that there was something special here. And so we, it, it grew from there. Yeah, and um, you're married now for how many years? Well, we've known each other over 34 years. Wow. And we, we settled the score in 1995. Okay. Yes, yes. So it's been, it's been a great journey, and it, it's all about commitment. Um, how is it like in the home? Who is the cook um, at home? Um, well, I'm the cook sometimes. I'm not the best cook because I, I don't enjoy cooking. And people <laughs> say, boy, really? I said, no, that's not my forte. I don't mind washing the dishes yes. and making small meals like salads and soups and mm -hmm. stuff like that and, and a, a nice salmon. Mm -hmm. But Tommy likes to make great smoothies. He okay. makes great juices, great smoothies. And the children would say he's the best Milo maker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but we always, we, we, we all come together and make it happen. Okay. I'm not a rice and peas person. Let me just put it there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he knows So what it. you normally have on Sundays then? Well, we go shop. <laughs> 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 because after we've spent the day celebrating the goodness of God, I don't want to be over, slaving over a stove. Right. And my husband knows that and he appreciates that and he says, come honey, let's go eat out or we bring part of the meal and we finish the rest at home. I'm going to be honest, yeah, because we want to enjoy each other's company. I don't want to be slaving over a stove on a Sunday. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> how many How many children are you? Well, I husband? gave birth to two, two beautiful children. Nathan Cowan and Naomi Cowan. I'm sure you all know who yes, Naomi, Naomi is, right? Yes, Naomi is, right. And of course, I gave, um, I've gave. i raised five others. Yes. Yes. Um, che, yes. Pastor Che Cowan, Pastor Sarah Cowan, Shakisha Cowan, Saida Cowan, and Debbie Cowan. God oh, placed huge. them in my <laughs> life. But it's been a joy, a tower of strength. They have made helped to make me mold and shape me to who I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, just being able to be there for them. Because when I met them, they were young. They were still in prep school. Yes. And, um, but God gave me this ability to serve. Wow. As, as they call me today, they're bonus mom. Wow. Because this is who I am to them. And they're my bonus children. And I love each and every one of them, you know, no different. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've had to deal with them at different stages of their lives. Some of them are married today with children. And so I have bonus grandchildren. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. It's, it's, it's a beautiful experience. I wouldn't change it for anything. And I have to give kudos to my husband because he stood with me through the, the rough times of raising children that you didn't give birth to. Because, you know, the challenges are going to be there. Yes. Um, and so he's the one that really bonded made sure we kept it together wow yeah so on a big up tommy i love that big up tommy. throughout your, <laughs> your your um music career you know throughout your life um what would you say are some of your most memorable moments ah there's so many um well first of all you know um the ability to travel because from i know myself i always wanted to travel so here it is, my parents brought me to England, and from that I was able to live in Canada. And because of my music, I'm able to travel the world over. So I'm um, going to Japan, you know, and um, the South America, mm -hmm. Europe, 
those are great moments meeting nelson mandela and winnie you mandela did? yes wow that's amazing because of the songs that we did for the fight against apartheid like welcome home mr mandela mm -hmm. winnie, winnie mandela, mandela. Yeah. rise up um there were different stages the first song was in tribute to winnie who was the one who was outside of jail fighting that battle for her husband who was in jail yes. for 27 years and of course when he came out we had a song that welcomed him mm -hmm. called welcome home mr mandela and of course rise up was when he became president wow. so there were three songs mm -hmm. in tribute to the fight against apartheid so and of course meeting um coretta king i never met martin luther king but i met her his 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 wife, wife. Coretta King. So, some great moments, and just being able to take the gospel mm -hmm. around the world, yeah. being invited to various nations by leaders of the Caribbean. You know, you name it, from Saint Vincent to Antigua to Saint Lucia, Dominica. They the the prime ministers have invited me to just come and bring the gospel because of that very same song you shared earlier this island needs jesus yes mm. oh. and um any accomplishments um that you are you know extremely proud of especially in your country jamaica well accomplishment mm -hmm. well i was given the order of distinction yeah for through music and community and community development yes. so that's a very special moment for me and um and also the the initiative called Fun in the Sun. Yes. You know, it's all about transforming the nation of Jamaica, mm -hmm. transforming the nations of the Caribbean, transforming the nations of the world. So it, it started here, mm -hmm. but we are taking it beyond the shores, yes. like Bronx, New York. We have just accomplished 10 years of Fun in the Sun in New York. We've done Haiti. And so for me, those are great accomplishment because it, it shows me that there's purpose on my life. Mm. And until he says it's over, we keep doing them. I love that. And we, we, we know you have to go. Um, but what I love is that a persons who are watching now can see that um, a little girl from Clarendon um, who has become this iconic, um, you know, woman of God, powerful um, woman of God with a warm heart, a beautiful soul, um, you know, that they can aspire to be like you. If there are, you know, aspiring young gospel artists out there who are watching now, what would you say to them? Ah, first of all, you have to know that this is the way that God wants you to go. And you know that it, you know that without the shadow of a doubt that he has called you to be a minister of the gospel because the challenges are going to come and you have to be prepared for it and so i would say study to show yourself approved the word of god says a workman needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so know the word of God because it's the word of God that's going to keep you. It's the word of God that's going to teach you how to write those songs to, to, to transform nations. Amen? Amen. So, and, and just make sure, honor those who have, you, you come into the, into the system and see, those who have already paved the way for you. Respect them mm. because they are the same ones that are going to be there to invest in you in the long run. Wow. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, if, 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 if they're, you know, wanting, I said that was the last question. <laughs> if they want to, to, to do a collaboration with Carlin Davis, is that possible? You know, with God, all things are possible. <laughs> <laughs> and timing is everything. Yes. So, who knows? Let's see. All right. Amen. I love that. Thank you so very much. Um, it was our pleasure having um, Dr. Carleen Davis Cohen right here on a chat with Darren. I have been anticipating this chat. Uh, so good to have you uh, watching this chat. Um, stay tuned for our next episode. Remember to follow us on Instagram at The Real Darren Smith. Subscribe to our channel. I want to say thanks to our sponsors, Chops Metal Work. Thank you so very much. Everything Anthony Media. My name is Darren Smith. Until then, see you next time.